Well, it wasn't only the RAND that reacted, the bond market as well that helped South Africa to raise debt. A global credit rating agency recently downgrading South Africa, also speaking out. Fitch ratings are saying that the replacement of Nklantla Niene does create uncertainty. It's not clear if there will be policy changes. Let's get some more reaction. And now I'm joined by Owen and Cornwall from Nkunzi Investments. Great to have you with us, Owen. Yeah, what a day to be here, Francis. Thank well, you. Well, just, just just give us a, a sense of, of your experience of this roller coaster ride and, and what investors were saying today, the day after. Yeah, so basically, it's, um, it's, it's, it's been a, a lot of sentiment around you know, people being shocked at the decision. Uh, the timing of the decision, the choice of the replacement, and the reasons behind uh, the, the, the making of this decision. You know, this is a very crucial ministry in the country. We're going through very difficult economic times. And all investors that we've been talking to are concerned that, uh, you know, maybe we're not taking the currently sensitive environment or economic environment into cognizance as we make decisions like this. And for that reason, you have seen the reaction uh, in the bond markets being aggressive, in the currency markets like we just saw in the chat there being aggressive as well on the downside. And I think there's more to come because foreigners are definitely piling out in uh, out of uh, some of the South African investments they've the, had. The bond market helps uh, South Africa to, to raise money, basically. Um, uh, investors demand a certain interest rate, then they will lend the, the government cash. Yes. Uh, explain for, for a layperson what is ac actually happening on the bond market and, and what it's saying. So basically what happens when the currency weakens like it has now, the talk is now about inflation going higher. We think inflation will go above 6% sooner than we were expecting, um, just because the currency has weakened this much. So what does that mean? It means the Reserve Bank governor, uh, Mr. Khanyaho, has got very limited room to maneuver. He's going to have to be forced to push interest rates higher. And the markets are factoring in higher interest rates going forward potentially at a faster pace than we had been expecting if the currency had stayed stable. And what does that mean? There's a relationship that the bonds have with interest rates. If interest rates go up, the prices of bonds go down. So for that reason, we've seen aggressive selling off in bonds, uh, both in the, in the private space and in the government space. For, and, and you know, you see that translating into the selling off. You saw in Sunlam, the biggest um, insurer to lose today, probably about 12 odd percent on the day, which also went across to the banks, which hold quite a lot of bonds, both corporate and government bonds in their portfolios. Mm. So it was really a big sell-off session, and I think the bond market is not getting as much attention as it really should be because it's definitely a very big market, and most people that have got investments that pay out on a monthly basis actually have a big chunk of their money invested in bonds. Well, well, that's a good point, because what does this mean for a lay person uh, who may not be speculating on the market, uh, but may have money invested and, and may just be interested in, in the trajectory um, of, of our economy? So it's very simple. So if you have an investment in a share, you want it to go up. So now you've invested in a bond, it's the same thing. You wish the prices could go higher. But the environment with higher interest rates doesn't accommodate uh, bonds that will keep uh, pushing higher. They'll fall. So what does that mean? If you're invested, for example, if you are uh, maybe in an insurance company or you're working for a company that used to invest in a pension fund that had a big weighting to bonds, it means the value of your pension fund on a monthly basis, if it's not fixed, from the time you bought it, you are now going to receive lower and lower uh, monthly income just because the valuation of uh, your investments has declined. But more importantly, Francis, I believe that for the men in the streets, about that inflation on food and you know many other things, all the imported drugs and stuff like that are going to cost us a little bit more just because of the currency weakening. And mm -hmm. worse still, there is no trigger that we are seeing at the moment that can reverse the current uh, decline in the rent, especially if you look at uh, the trade balance numbers and a whole lot of other measures that we'll use to analyze where the currency should be trading. Okay, so now Desmond Van Rooyen, or David Van Rooyen, the, the new finance minister, mm. he has two names, I understand. Um, he was trying to instill some confidence today. Let's talk about him, but let's first hear what uh, Desmond Van Rooyen had to say uh, about the task that he's faced with. Mine is a colossal assignment coming at a time when the global economic outlook is not favorable, more especially for emerging markets. All economic indicators, as you are all aware, 
are pointing to the south. Now, I must undertake in front of you and the nation that I will endeavor to ensure that every policy is directed at creating favorable investment conditions leading to the development of South Africa for all South Africans, not for the few. That was our new finance minister. We're speaking to Owen and Cuomo. Does that make you feel any better? Not at all. I mean, um, you know, the, the challenge that we have is that when I first picked up that there's been a change at the ministry, my first concern was that perhaps maybe we should have taken the second person in charge in the ministry to take over Mr. Nene's role. Or perhaps we should have gone to the Reserve Bank to take one of the deputy governors there to replace him as a minister or gone to Treasury. You're talking about people that have got an understanding how the, fin the country's fiscal position looks and uh, the people that know how we've been managing our monetary policy. So we've been told that there are people that will support uh, Mr. Van Rooyen, which is all good. But if you look at it historically, South Africa has had a very nice transition uh, in, the, in this ministry where you had um, Minister Gordon uh, replacing Minister Manuel, and then you had Mr. Mr. Nene replacing Mr. Gordon. And all of those people had credentials that helped give confidence into the market. And I don't think that we have that, especially from an experienced perspective. I think it will take a little bit more convincing for, for the markets to believe that uh, Mr. Van Rooyen is going to have... Uh, he says he doesn't have an easy task, but I think he probably has a lot more work to do than he thinks. Uh, Fitch uh, released a statement today saying he is relatively inexperienced, definitely relatively un unknown, but uh, to be fair, I remember when Nene came in, uh, there, there was a little bit of uncertainty. His name was in the hat, uh, so, so his name was out there, but, th but there was a little bit of uncertainty. I, 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 I wish I had a better choice of words to use, you know, than say chalk and cheese. Minister Nene had been involved with Treasury and with other areas of government, and he had experience as well coming through from, uh, from the revenue collector. And I think, obviously, from that perspective, that gave him way more of an advantage relative to, to uh, the new minister. That's not to say the new minister cannot learn, but trust me, the money that is leaving the country speaks more volumes, in my view, than any speculation we can put out there relative to, to what uh, the minister has to deal with. So, investors, you're speaking to, it sounds like a, a sense of confusion. Uh, the, the president hasn't taken us into his confidence and, and dismay, perhaps. Yeah, I mean, look, it's, it's a surprise. And because we've spoken to some people as well in the industry who would normally get consulted when decisions like these are made or who would have an idea that this is the trajectory in which uh, maybe the government wants to move in terms of his planning and appointments. But the president has used his authority and his right to do this dismissal because he actually appointed Mr. Nene himself. But now the thing is, we, w we were all shocked about this. And when a foreign investor calls you and says, but what's going on? And you say, I'm clueless. And you're supposed to be that person that convinces that foreign investor to calm down. Mm -hmm. When you yourself are in the dark about why such an excellent performer is being moved on to another role, it's a very difficult position. And I promise you that uh, if interest rates continue to go up, when it comes to our budget next year, we will have more constraints than there's room to play because our cost of interest on the debt that the country owes are going to increase. And I think that will make things harder when the government tries to go and look for money out there. Okay, presumably this decision is not going to be reversed. It's, it's happened. So what's the best uh, case scenario we can hope for? Look, I think that... The sell-off we're seeing now is all about confidence in our decision-making as a country, in, in terms of consistency, in terms of saying, here we are with a minister that's been doing a great job, and the president does acknowledge that, but now we are moving him to a minister or to a department or to a place that we don't know, and we're replacing with someone that doesn't understand what's going, that probably needs to take a little bit more time to understand how the ministry has been happening, has been managed, and also to for him to sit into a position where he understands the fiscal controls he needs to do. We are being prudent under Minister Nene. Is it going to continue on the same trajectory? If it does not, believe me, we'll, be, we'll have more, more downgrades. But what the government could do, in my view, is go out, call an emergency press conference and say, listen, we will continue to be prudent with our fiscal policy. We're not going to be exorbitant in our expenses. And everything that maybe Minister Nene indicated shouldn't be done, we are not going to approve that. Mm. But if the opposite happens, I do expect that we'll see more people 
exiting the country in terms of investments and looking to put their money elsewhere. And a weak currency, it is good for some, but for most people on the ground, it's definitely an unwelcome addition to, to the whole equation. Interest rates will go higher. You will pay more for your bonds. You will pay more for your car. You will pay more for your food. And the cycle is just going to be a vicious one. Okay, so his management of debt is crucial because that's something that everybody's worried about. We're taking on more and more debt. Um, are, are we being a little bit unfair as, as a nation. I remember criticism after uh, the, the budget um, and, and people liked uh, Nene's stable hand uh, but, but a lot were saying we need something out of the box because this economy is in such a rut. We maybe need more innovation. Now we're all saying we just want someone who's exactly like Nene. No, look, I mean, I, I think as much as Minister Nene um, was prudent we must understand that he didn't have much to play with. You've got to understand that the tax collector wasn't collecting enough, t enough tax. We're not creating enough new jobs to extend the tax base in the country. And I think that's uh, the big missing puzzle for the tax collector and for the government to balance what we owe and to balance things in terms of our trade balances, etc. If we don't get more people employed, if we don't increase our tax collection and we keep our expenditure at the levels where they are, it's going to be a problem. If Minister Nairnes' aim was to, for example, reduce public service uh, numbers and cut down expenditure on that front, if his aim was to reduce government spending and make sure that we don't do unnecessary expenditures, you know, and I've heard people talk about the restructure of the potential SAA deals with Boeing, etc., you know, which would have made sure that we are listing as opposed to buying uh, a plane or planes per se. I think if that those kind of ideas continue out in the new ministry, I think potentially we have a chance. But if the opposite happens then it's going to be very difficult to convince people to stay invested in the country. And I really think that most of the people out there are really yet to understand the impact of all the changes we have seen in the market today. All right, thank you so much for your time. Uh, talking about that real lack of confidence, Owen Nkomo from Nkunzi Investments.